Hey folks, Joseph A. Savoy here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. Now last week, I did review the film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory as a tribute to the late, great Gene Wilder, who's a great comic actor, writer, and director, very talented, and he was definitely the best Willy Wonka we ever had. And I just bought this recently at Target, just after I did my review. Got it for $5.45. Good price. I know it's not Blu-ray, but hopefully I will get that someday. But for now, I'm, I just got the DVD just so I can watch it at any time. But no matter what, though, this will remain a classic. And it always will be. But it, the problem was, though, it doesn't have anything that the book was going for so they had to do major changes with the story they had to add a lot of stuff to it which kinda looks very memorable I mean it is a musical of course and had a lot of memorable songs even though most of it was very corny but still I mean everybody remembers uh, Gene Wilder as Willy Wonka even though this wasn't Ron Dow's choice. And of course the Oompa Loompas. <laughs> we couldn't forget. We kept singing the song Oompa Loompa Doopa Dee Doo. I got a perfect puzzle for you. Yeah, I kind of messed up the line in my first review. But that's okay. And it has everything that they were going for. So despite of its problems, it's still a fun film. But now I'm going to review Tim Burton's adaptation of a Ron Dow book called simply Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now I got this at Best Buy. It was priced at $14.99, but actually I got it for less for $9.99. Um, the Blu ray came out in 2011 after its uh, four year release on HD DVD. And of course, they had two DVDs for the film after its theatrical release. Both came out in 2005. Anyway, this one has all the extras that's in the back right here. Yep, yeah, as you can see. And, <laughs> of course, in black, where you can see Willy Wonka, Harley. Anyway, I saw the film in theaters back in July of 2005. It was a box office success. Tim Burton wanted to do an adaptation of a Rondell story. Even though a lot of directors had tried to do this before him, they were going to get other actors to play the role for Willy Wonka, which actually includes Adam Sandler, yeah, hard to believe, as well as Will Smith. Yeah, I would imagine Will Smith in that role. <laughs> Doesn't seem to work that way. Nicholas Cage? Mm, I don't think so. Or any other actor they were going to get. E even Jim Carrey, too. Actually, I would imagine Jim Carrey for that role, too. As long as they get the hair and all the clothes that they got, then I think it would be perfect. But instead, um, they got Johnny Depp for the role. And I thought he was fine. Had no problem with him, even though there are some issues with, with his character. And, um, yeah, I have to admit, I mean, sometimes he does get a little goofy. And he's, he starts to act uh, rather weird and awkward. But otherwise, you know, I think he's fine. Um, I never understand the backlash this movie had. You know, after the film came out. I mean, they always had to do a comparison with the 1971 classic. But let's face it, this movie was supposed to stay true to the source material that's from the book. So everything that's in this movie is from the book. Whereas, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory just did some major changes. Like, for example, in this movie, there's actually squirrels. 
Well, in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, yeah, there are geeses, which creates the egg decator, which they actually use the machine where they tell you if, if the egg is good or bad, which is the golden chocolate eggs. Yeah. Whereas, in this version, the squirrels, they, they actually can tell if one nut is good or bad. And <laughs> that's how they had that room, you know, filled with tons of squirrels that were really wild. So, yeah. And, and of course, you know, they added all the lyrics uh, from the book, except they don't use the, the beginning that says, where the Oompa Loompas sing, Oompa Loompa Doopa Dee Doo, and so on. They just tell you the the lyrics, even though they had to use a, a jazzy and and all these other uh, type of songs that we're going to come up with just to make it feel like it's from the 60s, 70s, and all that other stuff in the mix. So, there you go. And plus, it has a great cast right there, including uh, Freddie Highmore, who was in the movie Finding Neverland with Johnny Depp, of course. And you also got some great actors too, like uh, Helen Bonham Carter, yeah, Tim Burton's wife, of course, a great actress. David Kelly from the movie uh, Waking That Divine, yeah, he was very old, but definitely the perfect choice to play the role. And you also got other actors like Missy Pyle, you know, from Galaxy Quest, and and they got Deep Boy who actually worked with Tim Burton in some movies, but not all, but I think a few. And he also uh, worked on other films as well. I mean, since he's he's a very uh, little man, but basically he plays all the Oompa Loompas. So he's only one man to do all of them. <laughs> Except he doesn't have green hair and doesn't have an orange face, but basically just tan. Yeah, right there. Okay. And I also love the cover art they chose for this release, so it looks really cool. It's actually from the the uh, the two this um, DVD set that they got that uses that cover art and all of that. But hey, but. I, I can understand, you know, why some people have mixed feelings about this movie when it came out. Yeah, I, I know Gene Wilder didn't care for this movie that much. I mean, he tried. He just felt like it was just an insult to the character and and the story. But but I think he needs to understand that it's based on the book. They're trying to stay true to the source material, but I understand. You know, there are some issues here. And I gotta admit, there are problems with the film, too. Anyway, let's get to the review. It stars Johnny Depp, Freddie Highmore, David Kelly, Helen Butterham Carter, Nora Taylor, Deep Roy, Missy Pyle, James Fox, Christopher Lee, yeah, God rest his soul, he was a great legendary actor, known for playing roles of of Dracula, yeah, the later version of Dracula, and all the other films he's been in, like Lord of the Rings and one of the Star Wars prequels. Adam Godley, Francesca Trutzner, Anna Sophia Robb, you know, has been best known for a role in Because of Wind Dixie, which came out that year. She was also later in the film uh, Bridge to Terabithia which I have, by the way. Great film. And then later, Soul Surfer. Julia Winter, Jordan Fry, Philip McGrath, Liz Smith, Eileen Essel, and David Morris. It's written by John August, which is based on the story by Ron Dell, and is directed by Tim Burton. The movie begins where we meet a young, sweet, and kind-loving boy 
named Charlie Bucket, who's played by Freddie Highmore, who lives inside a small cottage that's very narrower, all painted in gray, with his parents, his mother and father, both played by Helen Bonham Carter and Noah Taylor, and four bedridden grandparents, including Grandpa Joe, who's played by David Kelly. His father is about to pay for the income for the place, so he's be able to earn all of his shares by working inside a toothpaste factory. He was collecting all of the toothpaste caps for his son Charlie to actually create a model of Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, which is run by Willy Wonka himself, played by Johnny Depp, which was down the street. Grandpa Joe tells the story to Charlie that he once worked for Wonka himself at the factory along with many workers until he closes down his factory due to the fact that there was an espionage with Arthur Slugworth. He sent every single spy out there for stealing his secret recipe from Wonka so he can create his own uh, versions of all the candies that he has. But then he finally reopened the factory and begins to enter a contest where he's going to send all the lucky children around the world by sending out five golden tickets on each and every single Wonka chocolate bars out there. And so far only four people have found it. One is Augustus Goop, who's a fat kid from Germany, who's played by Philip Weisgrate. The Sporrel and Rotten Bratz, named Book of Salt, who's played by Julia Winter from Buckinghamshire. A competitive and boastful, you know, who loves to go around have, entering a ch gum chewing contest, not to mention she takes a karate class. Yeah, she's definitely very good at that. Named Violet Bardegard, who's played by Anna Sophia Robb from Atlanta, Georgia, and of course the arrogant and, and aggressive Mike TV, who's played by Jordan Fry, he you know, loves to play video games, um, and he's from Denver, Colorado. But Charlie was hoping to find the last golden ticket that might be hidden somewhere. Unfortunately, one person from Russia had found the golden ticket, but it turns out that it was a fake. So now, Charlie had his chance by actually finding a $10 bill on the ground and went inside the store to buy some Wonka bars, which apparently the, the last two that he had didn't include the ticket. But then when he finally opened the Wonka bar that he purchased, he finally found, you guessed it, the last golden ticket. So Charlie finally found the last golden ticket after his uh, first tries and he was lucky enough to finally race home and show it to his family and decided to invite only one and that is Grandpa Joe. So they had to get ready for February 1st which is um, during the winter as Willy Wonka decided to open the gates and have all the lucky winners to enter inside his chocolate factory. And they all did. Which apparently we had an introduction for Wonka by using all the puppets. So it creates a, uh, <laughs> a puppet show and, and it even shows a small chair until it suddenly went way out of control. <laughs> they had the Willy Wonka song <laughs> in there. And then he finally arrives <laughs> right behind them and um, basically he introduced him to himself by using the cue cards and there you go. <laughs> they went inside, you know, they, they dropped their coats and jackets and they went inside a small door and as they open the door it enters the chocolate room. Yep. It's like, as we speak, a wonderland.
full of uh, of candies everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you know, like gumdrops, lollipops, uh, you know, cake. I mean, you name it. And of course, the chocolate river. And we also meet the tiny little people, the Oompa Loompas, all played by Deep Roy. And there's like every single Oompa Loompas out there. And, <laughs> well, they, they that's where we get to hear um, Wonka's background story on how he found the Oompa Loompas from the Oompa Loompa land. Yeah, because this is where Wonka had explorer where a giant uh, dragonfly actually came all the way straight at him and cuts it and and there's like taffy <laughs> and of course he also had to drink up the the beetles but he actually just had to taste it first to see what it tastes like so then he got all the Oompa Loompas out of there and and had them work for his factory but then of course Augustus Goop had fell inside the chocolate river and then the suction tube had front, which is a like a ship right there this time around, that pick him up and suck him all the way up to the top. And then of course we have to hear Oompa Loompa's songs, you know, that actually rhymes with all the four children out there that that were very spoiled. Yeah, and that's what's going to keep on going as as they entered all the other rooms out there, including the inventing room. And all the other rooms that follow. So, of course, also, Charlie had begun to talk to uh, Wonka about um, how his uh, childhood experience has been going through over the years. Because now we begin to find out his background story that he's been having a tough life as a child. Basically, he had to wear braces and he lives with his father who's a dentist named Wilbur Wonka who's played by Christopher Lee which uh, one Halloween night you know, he just went for trick-or-treating he came back home he got all the candies and sadly Wilbur had to throw all the chocolates inside the fireplace so yeah that sucks Apparently, he found one chocolate that wasn't burned to a crisp. So, once he tried one chocolate, he just couldn't handle it. I mean, he just wanted to eat all the chocolates that he wants. That his father couldn't let him. And, yeah, apparently he had to run away from home. Somewhere far away, so he can get away from his father. But, none of it works. And then, of course, his... His house has been taken away. Yeah, that's the story. So anyway, once Augustus Goop has gotten in trouble, they went inside a boat ride, which has basically a dragon boat that's made out of you know, gummies. Yeah, it's like a gummy uh, dragon boat. Yep, all ridden by the Oompa Loompas, and they entered inside the tunnel, where we get to all the rooms, you have the inventing rooms, which has all the all the rooms all inside, as you can see. So they went inside the inventing room, where he started to use the machine, and that's where he created the gum, the chewing gum. Yeah, of course he had to use all these sarcastic uh, remarks and all these quirky jokes and. All this other stuff, yeah, because he's looking very awkward and all everything. Violet actually took the gum from Wonka, decided to chew it, where suddenly she turns into, you guessed it, a blueberry. <laughs> She's all blown up, all in blue, and she was like a giant blueberry. <laughs> So the Oompa Loompas had to help her out by squeezing um, all the juice from her body. Then they, we entered to the next room, which it's where um, all the squirrels are. Yeah, the nut room. <laughs> so 
So that's when uh, Baruch Asal decided that she wanted a squirrel because after all she, she wants everything these days. So she went down inside the room where he saw all the squirrels out there you know, creating all the nuts and you see like a um, a deep hole that's supposed to be the the garbage chute. Yeah, it creates that uh, that candy cane light surface that they have. Anyway, she went inside. Um, she tries to grab the squirrel, almost stealing um, his nuts. And then they went completely out of control. So then the squirrels have been attacking Baruka, just when Wonka was just ready to open the gate so they can grab her but he kept trying to find which key was it and then she fell all the way down into the deep hole to the garbage chute and of course the father had to go down there and after we treated to another Oompa Loompa song then they finally entered inside the Wonka Vader which is a glass elevator sending us all the way to the Wonka Vision room where of course now Mike TV suddenly gets um, into deep deep trouble once he enters uh, the Wonka Vision being teleported into the TV screen <laughs> yeah that's where we got treated to another song as we know it <laughs> which which is interesting too because they, they actually had all the references that they got in the film. Like they throw in a cycle reference. Um, all these uh, heavy metal rock stars out there. <laughs> and even a, uh, a news anchor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the only one that's left is Charlie and, and Grandpa Joe. So they went inside. The Wonka Vader, he finally won the prize, so he now has his own chocolate factory. But the only problem is, Wonka couldn't let uh, his parents stay there. So, because Wonka basically has problems uh, with parents uh, alone, and he thought that this would definitely be a problem for him. So, Charlie decided not to stay stay with him at all. So Wonka left but then but as um, days go by you know the family just decided that without the chocolate factory they're, they're still gonna have a good time you know, helping with the family and they got better and better as they went along and in fact he's shoe shining which turned out to be Willy Wonka himself because he parked his uh, glass elevator and Charlie decided that um, that he'll probably, because of what happened, he'll make it up to him by actually visiting his father. You know, so he can reconnect with him by taking him all the way to uh, his place. So then Wilbur had checked his teeth to see if it's already been floss. And, of course, as you already know, <laughs> it's all white. So you can tell that um, he hasn't had any cavities and all that. Of course, we already know that he has gray hair, too. And it's all the way around. So now, Charlie decided to invite Willy Wonka inside the cottage, you know, to have a feast. So it was cool. So despite of that, Charlie now has a home with his family inside the chocolate factory, while Willy Wonka now has, you guessed it, a family. So that's what the movie's all about. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And I do enjoy it. I still do. When I first saw the film in theaters, I actually saw it at Man Feeders in Glendale, which I went to go see it uh, on a very good day. I had to buy uh, a lot of movies back then too, 
at Tower Records and all these other places. So, and of course, I went to go eat out and all of that. I, I thought it was fun. I gotta admit, though, I, I kind of went a little nuts though when I said that uh, that Johnny Depp was better than Gene Wilder when it comes to Willy Wonka, because I knew I made a mistake. I was like a bad nut. <laughs> Okay, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, he did a fine performance, but I gotta admit, he does get a bit awkward at times, you know, he does have really funny makeup, and he does create all these uh, quirky and strange appearances. And on the plus side though, at least we got to see his background story on what was it like when he was a child, you know, he's having hard times. You know, connecting with his father. You know, since he works as a dentist and he has his own office. And the fact that he's not letting him have all the candies that he wants because, of course, he'll give him cavities. But that's just how his appearance is. And, and of course, uh, Deep Boy playing all the Oompa Loompas. It kind of gets uh, awkward here because apparently... I think they could have done a lot better if they had used all the other, you know, little people out there besides uh, Deep Roy. But that's okay, because he, he did a great job. Even though they could have given him some green hair and, and an orange face. But I guess that's the best they can come up with. Um, of course, there are a lot of CGI effects that they used in the film. But they did have some practical effects in the mix. I mean, it's all done in a set, which, believe it or not, was done at uh, Pinewood Studios in London. In fact, it was done inside the 007 booth. So it's amazing that <laughs> they actually created all the the chocolate rivers out there and, and the entire field all the way around. And all the other sets that they went into, so it looks really neat that they did it. Almost looks almost a little bit like the set that they used in the 1971 movie. It has a great cast right here, especially um, Freddie Highmore, who played Charlie Bucket in this version. I mean, we definitely get to see exactly what uh, Charlie is supposed to be. And I'm glad to see they actually focus on Charlie himself, so... Even though we had to see two ways about it, and it definitely kept the the Dow spirit, because it even has all the dialogue that's in the book, and even the look of it too, because Burton definitely wanted to inspire that, because he even created his drawings himself too, by using all these characters to make it look exactly like the the characters in the book. But yeah, Freddie Highmore was very good in the film. I mean, he was definitely had a great performance um, right up there with uh, Peter Ostrom in the 1971 version, as we know it. But hey, he was good in, in the movie Finding Neverland, so it was great to see him actually work with Johnny Depp again. So there you go. Uh, David Kelly, great job as Grandpa Joe. I mean, you could tell how old he looks, but he's definitely a caring actor to uh, portray the role perfectly. So you know exactly how nice he's supposed to be. And of course, you know, you got Anna Sophia Robb playing Violet in the movie. She gets to use her karate moves that she had to practice doing. Yeah, even though she does chew a lot of gum, she won a lot of rewards and all of that. You know, also has a mutter. Yeah, played by uh, Missy Pyle. <laughs> and all the characters, too, that just... They just look so bratty and spoiled. It's like, oh man, you just want to stay away from them. <laughs> yeah, including Baruch Assault and Mike TV. Uh, I also love the look of the film, too. I mean, they, they really did it all on set. I mean, they had to use all the models that they created before just before they started creating all the houses and the factory and and all these um, and even the cottage that the Tim Burton had visioned 
through the eyes of his imagination because he always loves to create films like this. And yeah, Burton is definitely trying to stay true to the source material too, so I give him credit for that. Because he managed to put all the, the words into the book, so at least now we know how it's supposed to be. There are problems with the, this version too, like they started making it more modernized in a way. I mean, it could have had sort of a 60s look to it, like it's supposed to have, and they did, uh, with the, the Wonka logos uh, that they had, you know, from those Wonka bars. And it does have the uh, the golden ticket that's actually done in a, in a very different way, as you can see. And there are close-up shots. I mean, you can tell they, they use a lot of filtering that they use, and some close-ups and all these techniques but I, I can see what uh, Burden was coming up with so there you go they still could have had kept um, the uh, the introduction to um, the Oompa Loompa song before they get to the, the characters names because they started mixing in with all this jazzy music and and all, all this uh, pop and rock style to it that's uh, that's actually done by uh, Danny Elfman himself you know, he had to try to use his voice into uh, Deep Boy because of course he <laughs> when he was uh, doing all the uh, choreographic moves he has all the choreographers out there to do um, all these dancing moves and everything he can't sing himself yeah, he says he's a terrible singer, but that's why they got him to do his singing voice and all of that. Make him a bit, uh, you know, higher pitch a little bit there. Well, there we go. <laughs> but it definitely had all the lyrics uh, from Ron Dow, so it's all kept in there. Definitely kept the spirit here. So it's all part of the, the screenplay that John... August had wrote. Definitely trying to make it stay true to it. And they also got Jeffrey Holder to do the narrator for for the story too as well. As you could hear, so it was interesting. Well, okay. So its budget is only a hundred and fifty million dollars. Comparison with um, the nineteen seventy one version being three million dollars. It made more for $21 million alone to make it highest grossing. This one is a lot higher than the Night Seven One movie. It only made $475 million worldwide. It was a box office success and had mixed reviews from critics, but it definitely um, had a certified fresh. Because it had the source material, despite of its problems, you know, with Johnny Depp's performance, but I thought he was fine. Yeah, I know they used Deep Boy as all the Oompa Loompas out there, <laughs> and of course the kids themselves being this bratty, yeah, including uh, Jordan Fry as. Uh, Mike TV, who was, oh yeah, he was so spoiled, you just feel like you just want to punch him in the face. But he gets what he deserves, so. <laughs> and the good thing about the film was that they got to show them leaving outside of the factory just when Charlie, Grandpa Joe, and Wonka were, were outside of the glass elevator, just about to go all the way to their house, you know, Charlie's house. So you got to see... <laughs> Baruch Hassel and his fodder, all all covered with garbage. You got to see <laughs> Violet and her mother, where <laughs> she started looking all flexible. <laughs> and then you see um, Mike and his fodder, which apparently he's all stretched out and tall. <laughs> and of course, uh, Gus's goop is already covered with chocolate, yeah, with his mother. So, so they turned out that they were okay. So, 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's sad that the 1971 film could have showed that, but I, I know, they had to keep it short. And all the changes they went into. But there you go. Yeah, um... And it was only 115 minutes, so that, that works. It, it keeps the story even longer. And the music wasn't uh, as corny as you thought it would be, but it definitely kept the spirit alive. So that's all I can say. But either way, I love this film. And Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, both together, along with the book. I would definitely recommend all of them, so here you go. So that's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and I give this film four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.